Good praise and worship today. The presence of the Lord is here. I appreciate all the comments that have been made today that I believe uh, are just right in tune with where we're going today. And uh, looking forward to what God's going to do in our lives today. I'm dressed down a little more than usual today. I, I know some of you are probably wondering about that, so I'm going to go ahead and explain it so you won't be bothered by it. <laughs> Don't want you to be hindered. <laughs> it ain't going to hinder me none, but um, I preached at the Cowboy Church at 8 o'clock this morning. And I figured it just might be a little weird if I showed up, you know, I needed to... Preppy? <laughs> Me? Moi? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we've got a family in our church. I bet a lot of you don't know this, and I, I ask them to make sure we had advance information next year so we could, could promote a little bit. The Jones family, as you know, uh, have really been through some challenges lately, Amen. but... Uh, they, I've been seeing these caps and these t-shirts for a while, and it says Pink Hat Classic. And I'm wondering, what are all these guys doing wearing a cap that says Pink Hat Classic? So I finally asked about it. Their daughter uh, that passed away, I don't know, probably, it's probably been 10 or 12 years ago, but she was really into riding horses and that kind of thing, and she always wore a little pink cowboy hat. And so now that uh, uh, that has passed, they do an annual um, benefit called the Pink Hat Classic. And it involves roping and uh, riding and all the stuff that cowboys do. And it's, uh, it's kind of a, I don't even know enough about it to really tell you about it. It's, apparently there's some type of show and competition and that sort of thing. And uh, they do that every year. This is the ninth year. And all the benefits go to people that have children that are going through serious health things like they did. And um, this family amazes me, the stuff they've been through recently, the determination. Janet was out there a while ago at the Cowboy Church. Uh, she came out in a special van and you know, in a wheelchair and everything, and she she was out there. But they have church for, those guys were there all night. They've been there all weekend. They were supposed to be doing their event during the day yesterday, and because it was so rainy, they had to wait for the rain to quit, and so it lasted way into the night. Uh, I think they were roping till about 3 o'clock, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, and Josh didn't even go to bed. He had work he had to do. Uh, to get ready for today, but they have what they call Cowboy Church, and all the people that attend that event that are there for the weekend uh, just come out in their jeans and cowboy hats and cowboy boots or whatever and have church, and so this morning, I didn't know it was going to be this way, but Pastor Jody Piles and his praise team were there uh, to lead the worship and then I was there, I got to preach to them. And so it was a good event. And so here I am with you guys. Thanks before we do anything else. I, I'm just going to urge you to do something very fitting before we get into the Word. Uh, I want us just to praise the Lord. Amen. Can you do that with me? Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We exalt you. We magnify you, God. We praise you. We exalt you in this place. We lift up the name of Jesus, for you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, don't you feel better? Don't you sense the presence of the Lord here? 
Just remain standing for the reading of God's word. In Psalms 34, in verse 1, we find these words. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do praise you today. We do bless you. We do thank you for this opportunity today to be in your house. We thank you for your undeniable presence that is here, for your spirit that is moving in this house today in every heart and every life. And Lord, we invite you. To move in our lives today. Father you have a plan and a purpose. You brought us here. This is a destiny time. For every person here. I pray God that you help us. To experience. What you want to do. In our lives. Help us to trust you. Help us to yield to you. And Lord we pray that you would be glorified. And exalted in our midst tonight. We give you thanks for it. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And you can be seated. We're going to talk for a few minutes today about the subject of perpetual praise. As I studied, that title came to me, Perpetual Praise. Praise seems to be the theme of the Psalms. If you read through the Psalms, it's just mentioned over and over and over again, this thing of praising the Lord. And Psalms 150 seems to sum it up, that everywhere, on every occasion, by everybody, and in every circumstance, it is appropriate and it's needful to praise the Lord. Listen to Psalms 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. We've been doing that. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praising the Lord and exalting His name is a habit. Now, I don't know about you, but most Christians that I know, including me, need to cultivate that habit. Because there are challenges to that habit. I want to tell you something that, that you, know, you may or may not realize, but the devil does not want praise to be a part of your life. There are two things that he really comes against in our lives. He hates it when we praise the Lord, and he hates it when we experience the joy of the Lord, and he will do anything he can to steal those things from us. He does not want you to praise the Lord. He does not want you to live and to operate and enjoy the joy of the Lord. And the reason for that is this. If he can extract those things from the life of a Christian, he can manipulate you with circumstances. That's so important, I'm going to say it again. If the devil can extract praise from your vocabulary, 
If he can extract the joy of the Lord from your life, then he can manipulate you with the circumstances of life. Somebody says, well, you know, Pastor, I, I just don't feel like I have a reason to praise the Lord. Well, you have plenty of reasons. You may not be aware of them. He brought you into this world. He gave you his breath. He breathed into Man and he became a living soul. He has an awesome plan for your life. As a matter of fact, he knew you before you were in your mother's womb, the scripture says. And he had a plan for your life. He has a plan to give you a hope and a future, the scripture says. And here's the thing that you need to realize is that the Holy Spirit... He, God is not only a good, good God and has everything good for people, but His Holy Spirit, from the time we are able to recognize it, begins to draw us and to woo us and to bring us into the good things of God. And you know what? When you get saved, it's just the beginning. The rest of your life, the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives to ensure that we come in to the abundant life and to the fullness that God has ordained for us. You got something to praise God for. We used to, Sheila and I used to sing a song together in church years ago. I guess we've sung it here at some point in the last 24 years. But somebody loves me. Answers my prayer. I know somebody loves me. I know he cares. Somebody loves you with an everlasting love. You can't do anything about the love of God. You can't do anything so bad that make him stop loving you. And you can't do anything so good to make, you love, make him love you anymore. He just loves you. You are, you are his focus. you got plenty to be thankful for. He is altogether worthy. God is good all the time. Now, I know... You realize, as do I, sometimes it's easier to praise the Lord than others. It just is. I mean, when everything is going your way, when it's going good, when you're having a good day or a good week, it's easier to praise the Lord. It may even be spontaneous. It really should be. Oftentimes I'll put on Facebook when I've done my Run for God workout. Thankful for the grace of God. You know what? I'm 65 years old. And every time I realize that I'm doing things that young men do. Running 5Ks and... Climbing 24, uh, Friday I was on a 24 foot extension ladder all day in the heat. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Drinking water, sweating, up and down. When I realized something like that, it's spontaneous. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing on my life. I mean... I, sometimes it just does us good to catalog and reflect on just how good God has been to us. And when we begin to do that, if there's not a praise that is ready just to, to come out of you, honey, there's something wrong. You need to do a little checking. You need to correct something because it is fitting. The psalmist says, 
It is comely. It looks good on us to praise the Lord. I mean, it just seems right at those times to praise the Lord. And when I see people around me that are going through hard things or that are less fortunate than, than, than I have been or have experienced harder things than I've experienced, my heart goes out to them at the same time. At the same time, I can't help but do it. At the same time, I think, but for God's grace, that could be me. But it's not always real easy to feel that way. Life has its challenges, doesn't it? We all have some of those. There's a couple things in this passage that I find intriguing and even challenging that I want to talk to you about. David didn't just say, I will bless the Lord at all times. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. All times? All times. When everything is going my way and when everything is going anything but my way, I will praise the Lord. He said, His praise shall, what's that next word? Continually. The Bible says, that's, that's another one of those things that kind of makes you uh, sort of sort of think of, a analyze a little bit. You know, it says for us to pray without ceasing. But here he is saying that the praise of our God will be continually in my mouth. He's talking about vocalizing praise to God. When the sun is shining and when the clouds are dark, when you're on the mountain and when you're in the valley, when everything is going your way just like you ordered it and when nothing When everything's falling apart, it seems like. It's very clear to me that what he's talking about here is the will of God is for us to displace some stuff that we have been saying or that we've been tempted to say. I believe that praising the Lord is supposed to be a spontaneous response in life Perhaps more so in the hard times than in the good times. Preacher, that don't make any sense. That can't be right. Oh, yeah. You know what I've learned is there's a lot of stuff in the spiritual realm. It don't seem right at first, but when you learn the truth of it, when you operate it, you realize why God put it there. Understand something. A sacrifice of praise is a powerful praise. I believe there's a valuable lesson that God is wanting to communicate to us here. I believe there's, a, there's something here, there's a key to you and I seeing God move miraculously in our lives. Praising the Lord. It's always the thing to do. It's always fitting and He's always worthy. And it will, all, listen to this, praising the Lord, regardless of what you're facing, it will always produce a positive effect in your life. Always. 
I'm reminded of an Old Testament story. You're familiar with it, I'm sure, for King Jehoshaphat. Pastor Derek made mention of it earlier. But he and the armies of Israel were being pursued and surrounded by a larger, more fierce army, perhaps, than themselves. And the king called for a time of prayer and fasting, and he began to ask God what to do. Lord, how are we going to fare in this situation? And here's what he was instructed to do. He was in, instructed not to pick out the best warriors, not to pick out the, the, the best trained military men and the biggest weapons they had, but he was instructed to select the singers and to send them out to battle first, and they would sing and praise the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And the scripture said that when he did that, the Lord, it didn't say that the Lord helped them to do it. It said the Lord set ambushments against their enemies, and they were smitten before them. I want to tell you something. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Don't you forget that the Lord is a mighty warrior. Don't you forget that the Lord will fight the battle for you. Can I tell you, I've experienced some of it. Perhaps you have too. But it is a wonderful thing when you realize that the Lord has fought the battle for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He told somebody in one place, he said, you just stand still. You just stand still, honey, and see the salvation of the Lord. Jehoshaphat and the armies of Israel did what God commanded. may not have made sense, but they did it. And the Lord gave them the victory. The key is to learn to praise the Lord in the face of anything. Lord, help us with that. Help us to that. Help us, Lord, not to vocalize a lot of the things that we do, but rather that our hair-trigger response in the face of anything we face is going to be to praise the Lord. The key is to pray and then to praise your way through it. Somebody has done a song called Praise Your Way Through. The way to get through life is to praise your way through it. Understand this, church. Praise is not something that the Lord needs. That's not why he commanded us to do that. That's not why it's in his word. He deserves it, but he doesn't need it. You and I are the ones that need it. You and I are the ones that need to praise the Lord. It's like forgiveness. You are the one that needs to operate in forgiveness. The person that hurts you, they don't need it near as bad as you do. The person that did you wrong, that you feel like, Man, if everything's ever, if there's ever going to be anything right between me and them, they're going to have to come on bended knee and ask for it. They don't need it near as bad as you do. You are the one that needs to forgive so that you can be free in that situation. You are the one that needs to forgive so that God can work in that situation. And I'm telling you something, when we begin to praise God in the face of our situations, it frees God to work in that situation where we could not. 
It's not that God needs the praise. You need the praise. Listen to this. Praising God perfects your perspective. How many of you know there's stuff that we're not seeing? There's just, in ev- there's stuff going on in our lives, in our everyday situations. There's a lot of stuff that we're just not seeing. Or we might be seeing a clouded view or a distorted view. But when we begin to praise the Lord, it perfects our perspective on the situation. When you're praising God, not only are you stating where your faith is, but you are exalting Him in your situation. The thing that you're facing may seem overwhelmingly big. But when you begin to praise the Lord, your God is exalted and he becomes bigger and bigger and that situation becomes smaller and smaller and soon you realize that it is nothing compared to your God. The rougher the situation you face, the more important it is that you praise the Lord. I want to remind you quickly of some stories in the Bible. Remember those three Hebrew lads that were thrown in the fiery furnace? It looked like the end. It looked like the very worst time for them. Worst thing that could be imaginable. But just at that moment... The, the fourth man, Jesus, came and he walked through there with them. And when they were delivered, the scripture says that not a hair on their head was singed and their clothes didn't even smell like fire. Do you remember a young man named Joseph? When he was betrayed when he was thrown in a pit, when he was conspired against and imprisoned, when he was forgotten by man, his God never forgot him. And he brought him out and exalted him just as he had promised. I want to tell you one more. Do you remember Paul and Silas bound in jail? And at midnight, the Bible says, at midnight... They prayed and they sang praises unto the Lord. I want you just for a minute. It's hard for us to do it in the comfort of this room. But will you just imagine an old cold, damp, dark prison? There's not very much that gets me in a bad humor and gets me cranky. And gets me grumbling any more than being cold, damp, and in a dark place. The only other thing might be if you get me hungry. Sometimes I get hangry. (laughs) Imagine these men, they were chained up. No doubt they were sore and their bodies were aching because they had been beaten and their wounds had not been dressed. But instead of moaning and groaning, instead of griping and complaining, at midnight they began to lift up a song of praise. The Bible says that the other prisoners heard them. The jailer heard them, but most importantly, God heard them and showed up in the middle of their situation and delivered them, and it resulted in multiple salvations. Hallelujah. Clint Brown has a song out. He says, sometimes you just have to give God a crazy praise, a praise that don't make no sense. 
but you know it's a thing to do. I'm telling you today, praise is a weapon. Praise is a covering. Praising God gives Him a place to move and work in your life. Now for the Christian, actually for anybody, but it's always fitting to praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, he says, let everything that hath breath praise. I'm pretty sure everybody in here today has the breath that God gifted you with. So, we've heard the word, we need to practice it. We need to practice it just not for this moment, but this needs to be the initiation of a new practice in our lives. See, I want us to get, I, I want to encourage you, I want us to get ready for God to move in our situation like he's been known to do so many times. Who in here has got a situation you want God to move in? Get ready. We're going to get ready in just a little bit to praise the Lord. And I'm going to ask you to join in. It's not me asking you though. The word of God and the spirit of God says let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord. If you want God to move in your life and in your situation, I want to encourage you just to step out and praise the Lord. I want you right now to cast down every reason you think you might have not to praise the Lord and simply praise Him from your heart and watch Him move. I believe with all of my heart that God wants to teach you and I the benefit of a perpetual praiser. Go ahead and stand to your feet. We hope this message has been a blessing to you today. When you are in our area, please consider joining us in person off exit 98 at One Harvest Place across from Walmart in Dublin.